Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the daily chart of silver, and I've drawn a couple of trend lines in here. First, I just wanted to thank all the members who supported uh, the member site and everything you've done, and welcome the new members that have come in since the interview with uh, Sean of SGT Report. He really is a great guy. We had uh, a very interesting discussion pre-interview. A lot of stuff I can't really share with you, but uh, there's a lot of shills and trolls in this community, and, and some of these people are actually kind of dangerous, to tell you the truth. But so welcome to the new people. I'm going to show you why uh, we decided to go with the member model. It kind of ruined my day just responding to all of the shoals and trolls. I'd really forgotten about what it was like. And uh, yes, we have a community. We don't agree on everything. Uh, there's a lot of people who are Christians. There are a lot of people who aren't Christians. There are a lot of people who are just silver stackers. There are a lot of conspiracy people. There's uh, you know, all kinds of different people on the site. And, uh, but I've kind of been sheltered and getting out doing that interview was a real eye opener. It really reminded me why, um, it's such a battle to go out every day and, and fight the trolls and shills. I'll show you one comment, but, uh, it's really not that important. I'm really already over it. But so welcome the new people and thank you everyone who supported the member site. I really appreciate your support. So this daily chart. Now, when you get a trend reversal, the thing is, is when you're in a big downtrend, um, all you really have to do is just kind of go sideways for a while and you're going to break through the downtrend line. That's what we're seeing here with this lower one. Uh, we're kind of peeking through it here at 1525. Will there be follow through? I don't know, but there could be. Uh, Silver's done it before. It's done it here. So we could jump right through 18. We don't know. Now to confirm, now I've never said that silver is in a bear market. Yes, it's in a bear market if you measure it from the top in, in uh, May of 2011 or even from here. But if you look on the long-term chart from 2003, from around 350 to four bucks, silver's still in a bull market. It's still up four to five fold from there. Now, what will I consider a resumption of the bull market? A resumption of the uptrend? It's gonna be up here. We're at least gonna have to take out that $37 price. Now, there's a lot of things in the way Big resistance around 19, big resistance around 26. And of course, the first thing that has to happen is to get past this downtrend line here that uh, is at around 15.25. So we'll see where we go from there. Now, the interview that I did with SGT, and uh, you can see it's got 407 thumbs up. 24 thumbs down. That's actually a pretty good ratio for YouTube. Uh, and, and most of the comments are supportive, but it just really brought me back into, here's Wealth Watchman thanking me. He's a great guy. Um, but I wanted to show you this one comment. This is the kind of comment that you have to deal with when you're on a public blog. This is this guy, Rick Shawman. He says, don't bother signing up for Brother John's subscription service. He's been wrong about silver for the last several years. I recall how he said silver price will sail through $50 and shoot to the moon. And since then, he's been telling people to buy all the way down from $50. Well, I at one point, I made a prediction that I thought silver would go through $100 by a certain date. That obviously was dumb to make a prediction. That's the last one I made. And, you know, I was wrong. It didn't do that, but this comment about $50, I do believe that when silver goes through $50, I don't know when it's gonna go through $50. I absolutely believe it is going through $50, and when it does go through $50, I do think it will sail through it and probably run very quickly to triple digits. But this is my reply, and this is, I've asked this question uh, back when I was releasing every video publicly I asked this question of every person who made this type of comment. 
And this is the question I ask. What forms of paper are you recommending? Stocks, bonds, T-bills, annuities, cash for bank bail-ins? This question is never answered. So they can tell you that you're wrong, that uh, you're buying it on the way down, but they can't tell you what you should be putting your money into. And there's another thread down here that I got involved in um, where Jim Cognition talks about uh, the way I destroyed Belange P. Well, I didn't destroy Belange P, but uh, I definitely disagreed with Belange P. And if you remember that video, I got pretty excited about it. I, that's something I've completely forgotten about. Was I perfect in that? No, I don't think so. I think I got fired up in the comments. But basically, if you remember, Blanche P was actually recommending U.S. savings bonds, if, if you can believe that. So the question is, is for the people who say, don't invest in silver because it's going down, then the question you have to ask them is, what do you recommend people invest their money in to be safe? And that question never gets an answer. So let's look at this Bill Bonner article from Zero Hedge, Here Come the Money Helicopters. Now, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and we're going to read through this and then look at a chart of the Fed funds rates, because I'm really thinking about, you know, what Janet Yellen was thinking when she had this stroke or fake stroke we don't know what it was and and what the fed is thinking and this is concentrating on japan of course they were the first ones to go down this road and it's just like uh going down an endless tunnel that you can never get out of but when we look at the fed, fed funds rate i'm going to talk about how i think that we're really looking at the fed being finished the whole concept of the federal reserve i think is finished. But let's read this article first. $10 trillion goes to Money Heaven. We interrupt our series on what to do if you have no money to bring you an update on those who are losing it. You can catch up on parts one and two of that series here and here. What was best? What was the best place for your money so far in 2015? By the way, you can see here that silver's basically at no return for 2015. Uh, we got shenanigans at the end of the year. You always get end of the year shenanigans. And uh, when when Silver Eagles aren't for sale, they take the price down. When Silver Eagles come back for sale, they bring the price up. But we're basically flat. What was the best place for your money so far in 2015? Cash. Compared to cash, almost everything is down. We're headed for the worst quarter for stocks since 2011, say says the lead story in today's Financial Times. Global stock markets have lost $10 trillion of their value. Wow, can you imagine if, let's see, 5% allocated to silver, that would be $500 billion going into silver. Over the last three months, what, where did that paper wealth go? The old timers say it went to money heaven. One fine morning in money heaven, will it ever rain down again? Of course, no money has actually disappeared. Only make-believe values have. We're not so sure, but we stop. We stare. We look as we would at a corpse. What happened to its life force? Where did it go? Why is it no longer there? We have no answer. But looking at the stock market sell-off is like standing over an open coffin. We are in awe at the power of the gods to take as well as to give. They ask no one's permission. They follow their own playbook, which they never reveal to the mortals. And they are as much a law unto themselves as the NSA. But what's $10 trillion that never actually existed anyway? Easy come, easy go, right? Well, yes and no. It's usually a pleasure to welcome a baby, but a funeral can be painful. And every one of those dollars now headed for heaven or hell will be missed by someone. On Wednesday, the Dow rose 154 points to 16049. That left the stock market overvalued by 8,000 points. At least that's the assessment of billionaire investor and Wall Street legend Carl Icahn. The current price earnings ratio 
for the Dow is 15. He says half of that is BS. Now there's a chart. Now that's an ugly chart. Um, I'm not the best technical trader, but that thing's headed down. Uh, money talks and BS walks is the old expression, and sometimes the BS walks out the door, taking the money with it. That is what has been happening in this quarter. And not only in the U.S., the biggest losses have been suffered abroad. Japan, for example, deserves special notice. Our trade of the decade sours. As you might remember, our trade of the decade was to sell Japanese government bonds, JGBs, and buy Japanese stocks. After a quarter century of a bear market, we figured Japanese investors were sure to catch a break and Japanese bonds had been so overbought for so long the market in JGBs was bound to run into trouble. This trade looked pretty good a few weeks ago. Japanese stocks were up almost 20% this year in dollar terms. That was largely thanks to Prime Minister Shinze Abe's plan to devalue the yen, one of his so-called three arrows but like all macroeconomic engineering by public officials, the plan soon revealed itself to be just more BS. And you can see here is the chart of the Nikkei is beginning to crumble. Instead of stimulating the economy, Abe's first two arrows, monetary and fiscal easing, struck vital organs, draining away what little life was left. Japan is now on the verge of a technical recession. Its economy shrank in the second quarter. And it's on the verge of repeating the trick in the quarter, just ending in fact. So disappointing were the results that Abe forgot his third arrow, structural reform. That's the one that never happens. And instead picked up a new quiver with the usual assortment of crooked and twisted policy claptrap. But the BS walked out the door anyway with Japanese stocks giving up all this year's gains. Japan's economy is shrinking and deflation came back to life the day after Abe proclaimed it dead. Abe's economic textbook, it's not working, so maybe they should do more of it. And now cometh Eschiro Honda, a special advisor to Mr. Abe and often described as an architect of Abenomics. Mr. Honda says it may be premature to say Japan is in recession. Instead, he describes the economy as static. In yesterday's interview with the Financial Times, Honda took no blame for the slowdown, even though he, as much as any living human being, is clearly responsible for it. Instead, he pr proposes to go full retard with even more imbecilic policies. Japan has nigh endless supply of insane Keynesians doing the same thing over and over and over again. Here is one more at Suro Honda. His proposal let's go full retard doesn't he know that no matter what you do you should never go full retard qe for the people this we fear is not just a freaky sideshow it's more like the coming attractions japan has led the world for the last three decades first with an unsustainable bubble economy in the 80s then with a meltdown followed by a long on again off again recession the Japanese feds tried every trick in the book to revive the economy except for the one that would have worked. The government borrowed and spent as a percentage of the economy more than any nation had ever done and invented ZERP and QE as policy tools. But now it's become urgent, says Honda, to do more. Hasn't he done enough already, you might ask? But no, he now proposes more QQE for qualitative and quantitative easing. What grotesquerie lies ahead? Our mouths hang open. What is this strange beast slouching towards the Eccles building, the headquarters of the U.S. Fed, waiting to be born? The idea behind Japan's quantitative easing was to increase the quantity of money in the system so as to decrease the quality of each unit. It was expressly meant to devalue the yen so that consumers would want to get rid of their currency faster. QQE makes no sense even in the perverse terms of modern central bank meddling. Here's how the money will come back from its hideout in money heaven by a helicopter. Look how happy the peasants are. But wait, there's more. Honda says it will be accompanied by a supplementary budget focusing on the real income shortage of mid and low income households. Right now, this proposed extra spending is being funded out of taxes, but support is growing around the world for such spending to be funded by People's QE. The idea behind People's QE is that central banks would directly fund government spending 
and even inject money directly into household bank accounts if need be, and the idea is catching on. Already, the European Central Bank is buying bonds of the European Investment Bank and the EU Institute an EU institution that finances infrastructure projects. And the new leader of Britain's Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, is backing a British version of the scheme. Aha, that's the monster coming to towns and villages near you. Call it overt monetary financing. Call it money from helicopters. Call it insane, but it won't be unpopular. Who will protest when the feds begin handing our money to mid- and low-income households? We wait, we watch, we wonder how the Japanese will attempt to bring back to life the economy they've worked so hard to kill. And now, all over the world, central planners, bankers, and politicians are watching too. Where goes the Bank of Japan? There too I shall go, they tell themselves. Stay tuned. So that is fascinating analysis. It really is true that Japan is leading the world in this insanity. But I wanted to take you to that chart of the interest rate on the Federal Reserve funds rate. Now, this is why I think the Fed is finished. Now, this has been mulling over in my mind for the last few days. And the idea is this. People like Bill Still and others, and there have been others throughout history. Some have said that Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy were in that camp. I would say that the framers of the Constitution were definitely not in this camp. But there were, and there are, a large number of people who are in the camp that say that we don't need a Federal Reserve. What we need is the Treasury to issue the currency and not at interest, not, uh, and you know the classic argument, if there's an interest rate assigned to the issuance of currency, then it's impossible to pay back the debt because by definition, it takes more money to pay back the loan than exists. Now that's a classic argument, Bill Still and others have used it. And, And they're arguing that we should have the Congress issue the currency through the Treasury and uh, just get rid of the Federal Reserve. Well, in essence, that's what this is. Because if you look at this interest rate, this interest rate from basically the beginning of 2009 to the current time frame, this is an admission that the Federal Reserve is finished. This is an admission that their model of lending money into existence and getting back money at interest doesn't work because they've had to set the interest rate at zero and leave it at zero. So if if it's the case that the Federal Reserve lends money into existence and the that's the reason that it exists is to lend money into in, uh, lend money into the system at an interest rate and control the system by the adjustment of that interest rate, if the interest rate is zero for six years running, then that is an admission by the Federal Reserve itself that it is finished and that it has no relevance anymore and that it is an institution that should be abolished. And we'll talk to you next time.